Hello everybody, here is Anna, also known as Ananita, and you can find me, my shop and my patterns and everything on ananita.com. You can find my charity group Make and Pray there as well if you want to be part of that too. In this episode I will show you two finished long-term projects. Okay, this week I have to show you two finished objects, um, some exciting shop news, my favorite comment of the week, the German word of the day. I will talk a little bit about our year-long make-along daily dedication 2023, our monthly make-along, or an, yeah, it's a make-along, not a knit-along, Anna's Knit Club, and I will answer some very interesting instant night questions. <sighs> it's very hot here in Germany. I think we have about 30 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit on the screen. I never remember how to um, tran no, not transfer it, calculate, change, whatever, <laughs> how to say it in Fahrenheit. I have migraine for six days in a row now. But yeah, you can do nothing about it, so I decided to podcast anyway. But if I have difficulties finding the right words, or if I, I'm a little bit slower than usual, that's the reason. I think we could start with my two finished objects, shall we? Okay, I did it. I really did it. I finished these two blankets. I think let's start with the Cozy Memories blanket. Here it is. It's ginormous and lovely. And I could have finished it already earlier, but I decided to add three more big blocks um, to add some length. And now it's t taller or longer than I am tall. Um, I think I think it could be about... 180 centimeters, maybe even 190. You see on the screen, hopefully, a few uh, recordings uh, of this blanket because it's always so difficult to show a blanket in this camera setup, with this camera setup. I started this blanket in May 2016. That was a very challenging and emotional time for me. Many things in my life came to an end. It was very painful. I had to let go of everything I had and everything... Every, I had to let go of, of my, my... not my life in the, in the sense of that, I, <laughs> that I'm dying, but everything else. I had me and a suitcase packed with a few garments and that's it. Okay, that was my life in 2016. I didn't know if I could get a job. I didn't know if I would receive the scholarship. I didn't know where to live. I didn't know where to go. I, I didn't know anything. And that was the time when I started this Cozy Memories blanket. I made every mistake you can make. I was a bloody beginner. Not a bloody beginner knitting wise, but I, for whatever reason, <laughs> I couldn't wrap around my head around the technique of picking up stitches in the way that all the lines of the mitered squares look into the same direction. I talked about it many times already. So I started this very crazy wild um, block. I will show you. Um, when I started this blanket, I wanted to make a normal Cozy Memories blanket without these frames in the blanket but that was my start okay these squares were the beginning here these I, for, I think these were the fir first four squares actually <laughs> I still know that I watched Ein Fall für Zwei it's, it's a German a little cheesy but a German <laughs> crime show that takes place in Frankfurt and uh, 
I know I watched it while I did cast on these four squares and it was so difficult for me and I had to count and I had to keep track of all the stitches until I realized, hey, I could use a stitch marker. Why not? <laughs> so I was a beginner. Then I realized that I don't like all, this, all these uh, different colors next to each other and saw the a stitch and time blanket or how it's called by the Bryony Bears. I never bought the pattern. I just saw that they made different blocks and these frames around them and I came up with my own pattern. But I decided to, um, unlike the Bryony Bears pattern suggest, suggests, um, do only one type of color in one block. Okay, so you see all the different um, shades of one color family, let's say. Here's pink and green and blue. In this blanket I have used merino, cashmere, um, superwash, non-superwash. I, I, I think some of these are non-superwash. Um, Singles, singles, so not twisted yarn, singles and four plies and three plies and sock yarn and silk and everything. <laughs> it's just everything is in here. And I threw it into the washing machine as I do. But if I wash some, something like this with more sensitive yarns, I'm looking for a spot um, where it bled a little bit into the white border, but not a lot. Um, when I do it, when I wash something like this in the washing machine, I always, I always use like the cold wash program or the wool wash program or the the program that imitates the hand wash program, so to say. So it, as if you would wash it by hand, because I can't see me washing this by hand. It is huge, and you can try your best to get rid of all the water and rinse it carefully but you will block it due to its weight that it gets when it's wet. But in the washing machine, the, what is it? The tumbling program um, throws out all the water. Oh, here it is. That is the only spot, I hope you can see this, where the color bled a little bit into the white border. That is everything that happened. And that happened in my other blanket as well. But I really, I'm not that, I don't, I, I don't mind. I knew this could happen. And I, I'm sure the more I use it and the more I wash it, um, the less visible it will be. <laughs> or maybe I can, maybe I could use a washing stick or cleaning stick. I don't know how these things are called. I don't even know how they are called in German. You know, sometimes you take this with you on, on a journey when you're traveling. You have this, looks like a pen and you can remove stains from your blouse or something. Yeah, so I knew this could happen and I'm very content with the result. I didn't block it because that happens automatically, as I, as I said. I dried it outside in the sun and it was, it dried within a few hours. You know, it was very wet when I took it out of the washing machine because I don't tumble dry it too heavy, heavily because of the sensitive yarns I used. And I haven't used it yet as a blanket because it's <laughs> so hot. I think we had one or two cooler days, but I didn't want to use it until I was able to show you on the podcast. Okay, that means 20 in May 2016. May 2016, that's seven years. Yeah, because now it's June. I think I finished it in in May. I think it was still May or May. I think it was the first day of June when I was weaving in all the ends. I was done with the knitting in May. That makes it <clears throat> seven years. Seven years! <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, and I, I really, I really would like to talk about these long-term projects with you. But first, I will show you the other finished long-term project. But but before I go over to this, um, this blanket is truly a memories blanket. I shared that on Instagram as well, but I know that most of you don't follow me on Instagram or don't use Instagram. So I will, I want to talk about it again. The memories blanket concept is you knit the leftovers from your project into your blanket so that you can in a few years use this blanket and have a look down onto the fabric and see oh that's the color which I used for the first pair of socks I knit for my husband or oh can you remember I used this yarn for the wedding gift of my sister when I knit her the shawl for her wedding dress or whatever, yeah? I knew quickly that that wouldn't be the case for my blanket because first of all, yes, I finish many projects, but not enough to make a blanket out of the leftovers within a reasonable time. <laughs> And I used a lot of advent calendar yarns. And as you know, I usually don't buy advent calendars. We will see, maybe this year, because I will have used up many scraps by the end of this year. We will talk about this later. Um, that means I only knit my leftovers into this blanket and the leftovers from people who swapped advent calendars from uh, with me. And I did this every year since 2016. So many people's leftovers are here in this um, blanket as well. And I remember the different advents I celebrated with those people and with you, with the community. And why is this, in my opinion, a truly memories blanket? Not because of in the first place uh, because of the yarns I used, although some of them carry memories along with them. No, because it is it is a long-term project. I started this in this tiny little flat in this very crazy time of my life. I took this with me to, let me count. Okay, I started it in this flat, then I moved one, two, three more times. So this, I took this blanket with me in, in, to, into four houses where I lived and made memories. I took this with me to vacations. I had this with me to doctor's appointments. I had this with me on the train for when I had to go to very important appointments everywhere in Germany. <laughs> so this blanket was, I think, everywhere. Not everywhere in Germany, but everywhere where I was. I took it everywhere I went and it was so easy because of the blocks I knitted. That is maybe something you want to try for yourself because if you only knit into a gigantic blanket there comes a time or a stage or a... Uh, the, the blanket will grow and from a certain point on you won't be able to take it with you so easily. But I took it with me everywhere, everywhere. So that's why this is really a memories blanket. This project was a companion through the darkest and the happiest times of my life. I, I really can say that. I really can say that. I started this in the darkest time of my life. And I don't, I don't want to be dramatic, but it's, it's true. It's true. It's really true. Um, I was, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine feeling worse than back then. Um, and now <laughs> I have this wonderful life. I have this loving husband. Every day is is more enjoyable than the day before. We love each other every day more than the day before. We have we live in a lovely flat. I have a cute little dog. We have a, we have great jobs. Um, it's great. It's a, I, I can't. Sometimes I have to pause and think, wow, Anna, 
you've come you, you've come a far way here here to this point and everything was was worth it and that's why this is a true memories blanket and I want to encourage you to not give up on your scrappy blankets on your memory projects because I know how frustrating it can get when you don't see that you make progress or when you seem it, it seems like you can't make the time for this project and you have to finish so many other things and sometimes it's heavy this is this whip can weigh heavily on us when we always stare at it and think oh, but i want to finish the sweater and the, all the socks and I, d you don't have to care about that knit on it when you get around to knit on it and someday you will finish it and how to finish it maybe a little quicker there I have it I have a, have an advice for you after I have spoken about this blanket so this is my first finished object and I'm very happy about it and I can't wait to use it okay Benny used it already <laughs> My second finished object is this huge prog uh, project. You see a few videos on the screen in a few moments as well. This is the so-called baby rainbow blanket. In German it's called Regenbogendecke, so rainbow blanket. There is a free version of it available so if you go to Ravelry it will direct link you to their website and there you find the pattern it's not a PDF it's a website and it's divided into 13 blog articles with many photos with many photo tutorials so even if you are not able to speak German but you are a inexperienced crocheter this should be possible to make for you there is a paid for version on Ravelry in English. I thought it was for free, but someone uh, wrote me and to told me, no, no, you have to pay for it. Maybe because it's a lot of work to translate it. Um, I made this into a baby blanket in the rainbow colors in 2018 for friends who had their first baby. And because this pattern was so much fun, it has so many different stitches. I decided to make this blanket for myself, but four times as big. So double the length and double the width. Uh, <laughs> so I think the baby blanket was finished after two weeks. So I thought it should only take four times as long. Uh, five years later, <laughs> finally finished it. So I started this in 2018 and finished it now in 2023 and you might recognize this blanket because that was part of my daily dedication 2023. And now I come to the hint or advice I have for you. If you have a big project, a long-term project, maybe a project that you don't that you love and hate sometimes maybe a project that needs more attention you don't stress about finishing it but you would like to make progress okay my idea was anna make a year long make a long daily dedication 2023 and dedicate a certain amount of time every day to work on this blanket and i connected it with listening to the bible it went very well for the first month, so for January. And I think the half of February and after that I only worked on it and listened to the Bible occasion depending on if I had the opportunity occasionally. Then I put it down for quite some time and when it started to get warmer I thought, okay, a cotton blanket is something I can work on now. You know, these huge wooly projects that get heavy and sweaty on your um, on your lap. 
aren't so perfect, but this is cotton, so it's nice. And I realized, oh gosh, I, I will be done so soon. That motivated me because I saw I only have to do, I think, two of the 13 clues in every... So the first 12 clues had 10 rows. For one row, I think I needed approximately 30 minutes, depending on the stitch. Okay, I was faster with granny stripes and it took a little longer if I had to do two colored crochet, for example. So you're carrying two threads. But in average, I would say 30 minutes for one row. And I realized, okay, only one of these, so I only had to do the last 10 row clue and then the border. So the 13th clue is the border. So I um, only worked on this project the last days. It was the perfect project for this weather and I was so motivated because I was seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> um, okay, but how how was this even possible? Because I I had this blanket as my priority in the beginning of this year. The daily dedication was planned differently. My daily dedication was planned, work on it, every single day for 30 minutes. Listen to the Bible for 30 minutes and during that time work on this blanket. Although I didn't do it for the first half of this year, only for one and a half months, I made a lot of progress. So maybe, maybe it could help you to say, this week, this week I will only work on this project. Or for example, this month, or when I have my off time of, of work, you know, uh, if you're on work leave and you don't travel somewhere and you say, no, this time I will only use for this or that project. If you have a sprint here and there during this year, or the next year or whenever you want to do that or you do the scrappy Sunday if you like that I, I tried it I tried it because I like the community around the scrappy Sunday but it d doesn't work for me I if I fall in love with a project I want to work on that that every day it I really would like to have a working schedule for my projects but for now it didn't it, it didn't work it doesn't work out for me but to say, okay, I will spend this month only or prioritize this project this month. Month. So always when I want to pick up a project, first I take this and after an hour or so I can take the other project. So that is an advice for you because I realized how much project uh, pro progress I made. It was amazing. So to work on something every day, 30 minutes for one and a half month, that was enough. I, do, I didn't need a whole year. And I finished the two blankets. And I'm working on a third blanket I will finish in the next weeks, I guess. Um, and when I calculated my daily dedication, I thought I would be done shortly before Christmas. And now it's June. I, so, and that's pretty amazing. It didn't went as planned, but it went even better. So don't be frustrated. Don't be frustrated with your long-term projects. Enjoy them here and there, prioritize them, but don't stress out. And as you see, these are two blankets and I have a third blanket I will show you in a few moments. So I had three big projects going on, three long-term projects. And I know many of you have the same. So you have maybe one crochet scrappy blanket, one knitting scrappy blanket, and then maybe even another scrappy blanket of some kind. It's about the fun. But it's more fun if you see a little progress. And to make progress, you have different possibilities to prioritize or, as I told you, to here and there have a sprint. Before I show you my other work in progress, or my other, my only work in progress for this week. Let's talk about the German word of the day. <laughs> okay, I know you like this tradition, so I will keep this segment of the show. The German word of the day is a lovely English word, 
but a not so nice German word. I would first tell you what the English translation would be. It would be homemaker or housewife, but the nicer translation would be homemaker. In German we call a housewife exact it's the same um, it's the same two words Hausfrau housewife <clears throat> but in the English language you also have this word homemaker and I prefer that a lot and I, I would be interested please tell me in the comments down below are only conservatives using the word homemaker because it sounds nicer and more respectful or is homemaker a word that is used by left and right? That would be interesting for me. So in German we call a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home wife a Hausfrau. Hausfrau. I don't like that word because it's not a slur but usually women who are Hausfrauen, so who are homemakers, when they get asked asked uh, what are do, what do you work that's uh, how we ask we don't ask what are you doing for a living we we ask word by word translated what do you work what is your work and they wouldn't accept being a housewife as a work yeah um, and so they usually answer I am only a housewife a hausfrau and only doesn't mean exclusively, that means, oh, I'm nothing more than a Hausfrau. And that is a pity, because I think many of you agree, homemakers are amazing. And if you decide to stay at home with your kids, or even before you have kids, to care for your house and for your husband, I don't think that you are lazy because there is so much to do. There is so much to do and there are so many things women don't do anymore these days because they have to work outside the house so much for many reasons. Uh, sometimes they simply have to because one income isn't enough or they have to pay off debt or mortgage or whatever. But many traditions, many habits, many activities, many things women usually did in the past can't aren't be done anymore because there is no time and there um, sometimes the society values other kind of work more than the other things like writing birthday cards for example that's a small thing but that is something my mom always my mom always worked uh, but she always made family the priority so for example she worked the early shifts so I didn't really realize that she was working. She was a nurse and I was never home alone. I was never, I never was at daycare. I never was, I had never had a nanny. My mom always was there for us. She made it possible. Simply, she made it possible. Um, what was I going to say? Anyway, my mom used to write all the birthday cards, Easter cards, Christmas cards and so on to all the friends and family. That was something important for her, or still is, and she did this for us. So, so she wrote all these cards in the name of our family. I don't know how it's in the US, but that is a, a tradition that is nearly completely lost. I receive cards for Christmas here and there from some people, from my Catholic friends, active Catholic friends, <laughs> I receive Easter cards, but, and here and there sometimes a birthday card and sometimes a postcard. Postcards are nearly dead nowadays, so when people are traveling. And that is an example for something that housewives did or Hausfrauen did in the past because because they could make the time for that because they didn't have to work outside the home and that is something that's not valued that is nothing you get paid for that is nothing you can say at the end of the day I wrote 30 Christmas cards I achieved something today I mean it's an achievement 
Have you ever written 30 personal cards? That <laughs> is an achievement. Uh, but no one outside your home nowadays will value this. You could have done something for earning money during that time. You could have cleaned this. You could have done this. You could, yeah. But that is a little piece of culture that is lost because of this thinking. And in my opinion, Hausfrauen, housewives, homemakers are the silent keepers of our culture. Not only when they have children, also before they um, raise children. I mean, that is even more important to raise children, but even before that, because they take the time not to earn something you have on your bank account, but they take the time to cultivate traditions and nice habits like or baking bread. How many people still know how to bake bread nowadays or to cook? Many people don't know how to cook. So these things are culture. And if we don't have the time for that, we will lose this part of culture. And that's why I think homemakers are amazing. And homemakers in German are called Hausfrau. A quick shop info before I show you my work in progress. I ordered new unicolors and I will put them up as so new opal unicolors. I will quickly show them. One. <laughs> Two. Oh, here's Benny. <laughs> light gray and middle gray charcoal or dark gray and I think it's yeah blue green it's called on my website I would call it petrol also And grass green I didn't show you that and next month I will receive so in July two new opal collections crazy waters and the other one is rain the rainforest collection um, yeah so you can look forward to that and now I will show you my current work and pro progress <laughs> It is another blanket. I was only working on blankets lately. Whew. Before I show you, I have to drink. It's very hot. And migraine is hard. I am using up the leftovers, full skeins, of my temperature blanket from 2019. I, had, I ordered too much, but it's always good to order more for temperature blankets just in case because of some of the colors you need more than others and I'm crocheting a granny ripple blanket if you search on YouTube you will find many tutorials in different languages with subtitles without subtitles and I am working along or I was working along a tutorial by Claudetta Crochet. It's, I think, a German tutorial. But as I said, there are so many tutorials. I have no idea how many stitches <laughs> I did cast on. Maybe it says you can find the info in my project page on Ravelry. It will be about 140 centimeters wide. So as long as my arm span. And I pay a little bit attention to the color colors I put next to each other but I try not to repeat color repeats <laughs> segments I I really try to create a random look it's a very fun stitch in my opinion it's very easy in the beginning I thought it could be difficult but no you I think after two rows you know what you have to look 
out for so you don't miss stitches. It's very easy. It's very much fun. This yarn is Stylecraft Special Decay. It's 100% acrylic. I think... Is it from Great Britain? I think so. It's very soft. It's easy to care for. Mm, oh, here is, for example, I used this in my temperature blanket for below zero degrees. <laughs> One color I used up already. It's this. And this green and this wine red wasn't from my temperature blanket, but from my Christmas blanket. Uh, these two colors are German acrylics by Schachenmeier, or how you would say, Schachenmeier. <laughs> um, I am uh, at how many rows? 40, no, 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 30? I think, okay, I think I crocheted 34 color stripes, that makes 68 rows, because I always crochet two rows in one color for a little cleaner look. That means I have to crochet as much as I already have crocheted, that would make a blanket of 180 centimeters. So, what is it? I think is it a man who is six foot tall, I think is 180 and a little bit centimeters tall, if I'm not completely wrong. <laughs> it's so difficult with inches and foot and so on. Yeah, it's fun, it's easy, it's a huge blanket, so it's a thick blanket and it's uh, very warm, but I, I still work on it, because it's so much fun. And I added a spread into my bullet journal and always when I finished one color row, that means two crocheted rows, I cross it off. It, that keeps me motivated and I keep an overview how much I have to do until it's finished. And here is everything I have left. And I weighed the blanket when I reach, reached the half point. I think I will use um, two kilogram. I think all in all, yeah, I think when I weighed it, it was about one kilogram. That makes 10 balls of these yarns because it's 100 gram each. That means I will still have, to, I will still have all in all about three or four skeins left, not full skeins. I think many leftovers from different colors. So maybe I will make a pillowcase from that leftover and that should be everything. I would like to use up everything I have. Oh, and I also have much left over from this here. I think enough for another blanket. Uh, I think not in that size. I ordered 35 50 gram balls. I used German 100% cotton yarn in DK weight. Um, and I think I I think I used 20 balls and I have 15 left or so. So I could make another blanket. Maybe another ripple blanket or maybe I will use the cotton for different tiny projects like um pen holders or wash washcloth. Some of them are mercerized and some of them are not, so I will have to keep that in mind as well. But I think I need a break from this yarn to not get bored. <laughs> it's time for my favorite comment. As you know, I pick always pick from the last video a comment that was inspiring or very nice or interesting for you all. In this week the comment is from Stephanie from the podcast Texas Peach Knits, a podcast I would recommend. She has every month a new episode and she writes, 
Hi Anna, I'm so happy to see you. I love that you are dedicating time to homemaking. Perfect for our word of the day. It is so worth it. I also have too many interests and hobbies, plus I'm very easily distracted. I like to try to fit in time during the day to the projects that I'm enjoying the most at the moment, but often when a project gets stale, I have to I either first decide to focus all my extra energy on it to finish it up or second, set it aside indefinitely. <laughs> This helps me rotate things. I also enjoy many things seasonally. Sewing and spinning are often summer activities and get a lot of time then. My non-fiber hobbies are gardening for f food and flowers, reading, I let the seasons decide what I'm reading too, and thrifting, I love browsing resale shops and rescuing Catholic art. I did the last part as well. When I lived in northern Germany, I visited many flea markets and I bought icons and statues and rosaries and so on. Uh, yeah, Here in eastern Germany no one sells this because no one was Catholic here. Um, yeah, I like this comic co comment a lot uh, because thank you uh, for the part about homemaking. I decided to make homemaking my priority. I still have the shop, but it takes the back seat. My first priority is our home, my husband and our home, and I enjoy it so much. Homemaking is lovely. Um, and the other thing why I took this as my favorite comment, comment I always want to say comment, is the idea of having a kind of schedule for your projects, for your hobbies. I have a schedule for my day. I don't know, I have my prayer then, I have the walks with Benny on a certain time, you know, you have breakfast, lunch and dinner at certain times. I like having a schedule. <laughs> and I like the idea of having a schedule for my hobbies as well. For example, a floss tuber, um, she's called Made by Michelle McGraw. It's a very nice podcast about cross stitching. She has a Benny us. She has a schedule like from January to February. I work on Valentine's Day projects. Then I work on St. Paddy's. Then I work on Christmas. Then I work on Hall Halloween projects. I think the idea is very nice. Um, And I would like to find a way to do that with all my hobbies as well. So season, seasons are a great idea to say, okay, during the summer I focus on these kind of things. During the winter these or during Christmas season I focus on this and that. So that could be an idea. I still try to work out something. Maybe you have recommendations. If so, please share them with me in the comment section down below. I don't know, I think what I miss from my school time the most is the schedule. I loved to know when I will have my German classes and when I will have physical education. You had something to plan, you had something to look forward to. I love routines, I love routines. I'm that boring kind of woman. I just love routines. <laughs> It's, yeah, you get so much done if you follow routines. Okay. Our current, let's knit along talk for a second. Our current prompt for Anna's Knit Club, it's our make along that has a new prompt every month. It's very casual, it's very easy. Everyone can participate on Instagram and Telegram. Everything is linked down below. Is self-striping yarn. Whatever you do, weaving, even cross-stitching, you can cross-stitch with uh, self-stripping yarn, knitting, crocheting. If you create self-stripping yarn, for example, by spinning, go for it. Share it with the hashtag Anna's Knit Club on Instagram and you can win a prize. Now we have two segments left for this podcast this week. Uh, and before I answer the Insta Knit Night questions, I would like to talk a little bit about my homemaking the last weeks. During May and June, the elder tree or elder bushes bloom. You, pr pretty much everyone knows that you can use the elder berries to make juice, for example, or jelly. But it seems like not many people from abroad know that you can 
use the blossoms as well. I learned this in Austria. It's a very common thing to do in Austria to make syrup and jelly uh, with the elder blossoms. And maybe I find a little um, footage on my phone I took for the Instagram stories if you follow if you would like to follow around what I do homemaking wise and knitting wise Instagram is a good place to be so I really enjoy the jelly it's I use apple juice as the base and I soak many elder blos blossoms in the apple juice and let it sit for a few days and citric acid and a lemon juice and so on and then I use the yeah the apple elder liquid <laughs> to make jelly and syrup so we drink the syrup with six time as six time as much water and lemon juice and ice cubes during the summer it's our favorite drink it's very delicious and if you're very thirsty on a hot summer day, it's the perfect beverage. And the jelly I like to eat for breakfast on a good self-made bread or on a good bun. And it was funny because the first batch was only eight glasses of jelly, I think, because there weren't um, enough or and that there weren't many blossoms yet when I was doing that. And I gave away a few glasses or I was planning to give away a few glasses to friends and family and Tommy was asking asked after he tried the jelly how many will be left for us <laughs> and there was such a happy moment because I know that he values what I do but if he likes something really much if he enjoys the taste of something I make whether it's baking or cooking or whatever it's like a home run or like a strike or like I don't know it's I love this moment so much when that occurs and so I said no worries I will make more jelly for us and all in all I made 30 sorry that was Benny 33 glasses of jelly and seven liter oh, on the screen you can read the gallons I forgot how many I think two and a half gallons is it that I think something like that so seven liters of syrup keep in mind you use like this much syrup and this much water that means we we, we will be good <laughs> for the whole year <laughs> until the next blossom season is here so there's something i enjoy very much and the next time i will make juice so it will be by the approximately by the end of August when the elderberries are uh, is it ripe is it, as in German we say reif so when you can pick them then I will make juice and maybe a little bit jelly for breakfast as well that's my homemaking plan for the end of the summer and now in Sunday night questions I think I will answer two today what type and weight of yarn do you prefer to knit or crochet with? What type? Okay, weight of yarn, fingering and DK. But I would say I prefer DK, uh, sorry, fingering weight, because maybe it's I, I use a wrong technique to hold the yarn and that makes it so difficult for me to work with thicker yarn. So I would say fingering weight type I think sock yarn so like opal yarn that has a little bit more body or structure I would say so it's easier to catch the loops or the stitches what is the most used item in your bag besides the knitting needles <laughs> the scissors and the darning needle because I'm weaving in ends as I go most of the times and I have a little pair of scissors that fits into my notions box I think these are the two items I use the most if I use 
wool I often break the yarn with my hands but then I use so the most use used item would be my darning needle I like a big and very sharp darning needle I don't use these tapestry needles because the way I weave in my ends you see in all my tutorials in my sock knitting tutorial in the last chapter for example I have to split the stitches to secure the end I don't yeah so and you can't do that with a not pointy needle and that would be everything for today I hope you enjoyed the show and I hope I will see you in the comment section down below we will see each other maybe in two weeks until then, enjoy your crafts, make time for homemaking if you like, and bye bye!